In this video, we're going to look at functions, continuing my course on Node.js and JavaScript for beginners. So functions, for many people, are the point at which they start to feel um, that they're not quite sure what's going on with JavaScript. Um, many web designers, I think, use a bit of JavaScript and are okay with it to a point, but with when it gets to functions, well, maybe they're still okay, but then they gradually start to lose the thread of what's going on. Uh, so if you are a web designer, welcome to the course. And if you're not, um, that's great too. So let's uh, start with use strict here. What, what actually is a function? Well, in mathematics, there's an idea of, of a function which is fairly strict. And a function in mathematics basically takes in some kind of number, um, not necessarily a number in the sort of traditional sense of it, but it takes in some kind of a number and it, re it gives you back another number. So it's like a black box where you, you give your function a number, it, it may or may not do something with it, and then it gives you another number in return. So you can think of it like a mapping from one set of numbers to another. But anyway, in programming, uh, functions are something a bit, a bit different, uh, but similar. So a function is, is basically a collection of statements which you can then easily run. And um, functions can, they can sort of accept data as we're going to see, and they can give us data back. But in this video, let's just take a look at a really basic usage of a really simple function. It's just a collection of statements. And there are, there are actually quite a few different ways of defining a function in JavaScript. And here we're going to look at the, probably, this, probably the simplest way of creating a function and the way that's also most similar uh, in a way to most other programming languages, I would say, the sort of oldest way as well. So let's supposing we have um, some series of statements. So for simplicity, let's just yeah, let's, let's actually have a loop. Let's write for let i equals zero, i less than three, i plus plus. Typical for loop. And in there I'll just write console.log. And uh, let's write hello and i just to get some output. So if I run this program now, let's run node functions.js, we get hello123. Now, um, this might be some really useful code, which we might want to run at various times in our program. And what we can do is package it up into a function, and then we can run it when we want. So function syntax, to create a function, we can use the word, the keyword function. And then we need to give it a name. Let's um, call this function greet, just a name that I've made up. Uh, and following that, so if, if you look at this, it's, this is a bit like declaring a variable, except instead of let or var, we've got the keyword function, but then we've got a name like we would with a variable. But a key difference here is that we then have two round brackets like this, and then we've got two curly brackets, which as with loops is where we put the code that we want to run. So let's take this code and transfer it into the function. I'm just going to use the hold down the option or alt key and use the down arrow here to move it. And Visual Studio Code helpfully indents it for me. So I've taken this for loop and put it inside this function here. And we can then run that code whenever we want by typing the name of the function and again two round brackets. And I'll finish this statement with a semicolon, which I think is good practice. It's the best thing to do. Let's clear the console and run it. And you can see it does the same thing as before. So uh, some things to say about this. Um, for one thing, when we have curly brackets like this, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but we need to really... Um, we need to really make sure we do this. When we have curly brackets, the code inside them gets indented by one tab. Now, some people prefer using spaces, uh, and programmers can get famously 
opinionated about this. So there's a, a, a really funny TV series called Silicon Valley. And in that, there's a programmer who splits up with his girlfriend because he thinks you should use tabs to indent things and she thinks you, <laughs> she thinks you should use spaces. Probably funny only to a programmer. But um, programmers do get you know, strong opinions about this. The most important thing, though, is consistency. If, if you're working in a team of programmers that indent stuff with four spaces, typically it would be four, then you should do that. And if they use tabs, then you should use tabs. Fortunately, though, um, I prefer, you see, I prefer tabs and I hate typing out. I really don't like typing out four spaces. But fortunately, you can always configure editors to turn tabs into spaces or spaces into tabs or whatever. Anyway, the important thing, the vital thing here is that between curly brackets, you've got to indent um, the code that you put in there. Uh, and I'm going to say one by one tab because I like to use tabs. So within these two curly brackets, we've indented all of this code by a tab. And because we've got more curly brackets here for the for loop, this code gets indented by another tab. That's very, very important. And if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can actually, um, so on, on the Mac that I'm using here, if I hold down the Option key, press Shift, and then F, it formats the code automatically for me. So on Windows, I'm guessing that would be the Alt key, Shift, and F. It might pop up a dialog asking you to choose um, a formatter but you know you should be able to do that if you've installed some plugins for working with JavaScript. You should be able to get auto format working, so that when you press Option Shift F or Alt Shift F, it formats your code automatically for you. Um, try. I, I would strongly recommend trying to get that working. Uh, you should always strive for good formatting when you actually write your code, but. I, I think for beginners especially, auto format uh, is, is very, very helpful. It gives you a check, enables you to make sure that you have indeed formatted your code reasonably. And well formatted code is much easier to read than badly formatted code. So this, this isn't just a cosmetic thing. As far as the JavaScript interpreter is concerned, formatting is cosmetic. But as far as we're concerned, it's vital. It, ma it makes your programs maintainable and readable, or it's a vital part of making them maintainable and readable. Okay, anyway, let's get back to the main subject of this um, tutorial. So what have we actually done here? So we've, we've created a function called greet, and this function greet is a collection of statements. In this case, it's just got a for loop in, and we can, we can then run this function greet whenever we want. So here we're defining the function. We're saying what this function does. And here we're calling the function, or in other words, we're making it actually run. So this does not run any code. It simply defines a function uh, containing this code. It doesn't actually run anything. This is what actually runs your function. So here we're calling the function, we're actually running it. If I don't put this in, let's comment it out, and I just run this program, it does nothing. Let's put it back again, and then it runs the function. Now, the, the thing about this is we can call it whenever we want in our program, whenever we need it. Let's call it again here. So I'll just copy that, and there we go. Let's have another one. So now I've got, I'm running that function twice. You can imagine this is um, extremely useful. Uh, for one thing, it means that, you know, if you've got the same uh, collection of statements that you want to run multiple times, you don't have to type them multiple times, and indeed you shouldn't. You know, if you're running the same thing multiple times, put it in a function and call the function multiple times. For another thing, it's a great tool for um, making your programs just like making them more readable and making them more maintainable, sort of breaking them up into separate pieces that you can call when you need them. We're going to look at more advanced ways of uh, of arranging or structuring programs, but this is 
a great start. We can e- we could even call greet in a loop if we want. Then effectively would have a loop within a loop. Let's just call it one more time. So hopefully you get the idea. There we go. Um, so again, the thing is always uh, is just to practice this. Type out this, get it working, and then try to be a bit creative with it. Try to define your own function, call it whatever you like, and put some statements in it. You don't have to have a loop. You can put what you like in a function as long as it's valid JavaScript and try calling it. And don't forget, try to get auto format working. Use auto format constantly is my recommendation. But also try to format code nicely when you actually write it as well. Okay, so until next time, happy coding. In this video, we're going to take a look at function parameters, continuing my course on JavaScript and Node.js for beginners. So in the last video, we took a look at how to define a simple function. Now, actually, JavaScript is very flexible. It lets you define functions in a variety of ways. And um, we can also put functions in structures called classes. And we can do functional programming where we're passing functions to functions. But we're going to look at that later on. Here we're just going to concentrate on some basic building blocks and getting some basic ideas uh, straight. So um, let's create a new file here, and I'm going to call it parameters.js. We'll start with use strict, and we'll create a function. Let's create a function. I'll call it greet again, which is what I called it in the last um, video. Um, so function names basically follow the same convention usually as variable names. So um, if you wanted to create a function called greet person, uh, let's say you wanted to create a function called hello world, usually you'd start it with a lowercase first letter most often, or it's the most common convention. And the second word of it will begin with an uppercase first letter, like this. Um, I'm tempted to actually call it hello world, but anyway, no, let's call it greet. So as before, we have the keyword function and we have a name that we made up for it and then we have two round brackets and we have two curly brackets and in here we can put some statements whatever we like as long as it's valid javascript let's write console.log and hello so this by itself doesn't do anything other than define a function if i run this now so node parameters.js Nothing comes out. Uh, we have to actually call the function somewhere. and We can call it wherever we, wherever we like in our program here. Um, although, so what we would normally do is this. So let's write greet uh, to actually call the function. In other words, to actually make the function execute. So to make it run the code that it contains. And then if I, call, if I write node parameters.js, it says hello. Let's try moving greet above here, above where we define the function. And it actually still works. So in some programming languages, you could only call the function after you've defined it. And that still looks kind of right to me. So if you, if you think about the JavaScript interpreter sort of reading downwards, um, it's going to go down, the function gets defined, and then we can actually call it. But actually, JavaScript typically is very flexible. So it allows us here to call the function before we've actually defined it. And it's, it's able to go and get the function definition for you. But um, that's not true in all programming languages. So it's worth being aware of that. To me, it kind of feels more right because I'm used to other programming languages to call the function after it's defined. Anyway, um, we're going to look at function parameters in this video. So in the last video, I said that um, there, the idea of functions comes from mathematics. And a function in mathematics is like a black box where you throw a number into the box, so to speak, and it processes the number and spits another number out. Um, and in programming, 
we don't have to pass any data to functions and we don't have to get any data out of it so here we're not doing the function is purely it's purely some statements that it executes but we can nevertheless pass data to a function and we can get data out of it again let's take a look at how to do that so supposing we want to alter the behavior of this function so that it outputs a name so it says like hello bob or whatever between these two round brackets we can write the name of a variable so it's um, although in effect here we're declaring a variable but we don't use any kind of word like let or anything we just write the name of the variable that we want to use so let's supposing I want a variable called name I just write name there and this is something that I'm going to pass to the function when I call it so the function is going to have this name whatever's in there we don't know it could be anything it could be a number but hopefully it's something appropriate because we have called it name and um, I'm going to output that with console.log let's write comma name now um, this so this says that this function uh, has a parameter called name in other words it can accept some data which is going to be placed in this name variable to actually pass that data to the function when we call it in the round brackets uh, after you know where we actually call the function we can pass in um, some data let's write Bob and let's run this and see what it does so I run it and it says hello Bob what's happening here well um, a kind of analogy I like to make is that when we call the function these the two round brackets here are kind of like a chute and what we're doing is we're throwing Bob in this case down the chute we're throwing some data down the chute the chute comes out here where we define the function and this Bob ends up getting thrown into this variable here and then we can use that variable here um, so let's try it again with a different name let's write greet and uh, let's write Claire we've got to be um, <laughs> got to use uh, male and female names uh, equally but then there are also sort of um, names that are neither male or female it's a minefield basically but anyway uh, let's run this okay so hello Bob and hello Claire um, so we're using the same function but we're changing how it works because the first time it says hello Bob the second time it says hello Claire if you if you've ever used a, a synthesizer like a musical the musical instrument um, it will have various things that you can change and control and we call those parameters so you change the parameters parameter values on the synthesizer to change what sounds it makes functions are kind of the same so we, we call this a parameter because it changes how the function works this is a function parameter um, and it, it is also a variable and we're outputting the variable in our console.log when we actually pass values to the function we call them arguments so we supply an argument to the function kind of strange lingo why why it's argument um, I guess that comes from mathematics as well but uh, you'll get used to it so this is a function parameter um, this name variable here and here we're passing arguments to the function we can actually also pass more than one so um, supposing we wanted to pass in the name of a day so we can have a list of parameters here let's write comma day um, so I'm not using it at the moment if I were to run it at the moment uh, so many programming languages would uh, if I try to run this now so I've got a function that expects two arguments because it's got two parameters and I'm running it each time with only one argument many programming languages will gag at that point they would refuse to execute they would say no this is wrong but JavaScript happily executes it does the same thing as before at the moment um, JavaScript's extreme flexibility 
uh, partly comes from just, just, I suppose, it being an interpreted uh, sort of scripting type language. You know, it, it um, interpreted in the sense that when you run it, there's an actual program node in this particular case that's actually interpreting the program and running it. And interpreted languages tend to be more flexible than compiled languages where you take text and you turn it into a binary file, you compile it into a binary file. It's also weakly typed, so um, variables don't have types. It's not like we have one kind of variable that's an integer and one that's a piece of text and so on. You know, we have weak typing in JavaScript, so it's very flexible in the nature of it. And because it was originally designed to run in browsers, um, it doesn't make any strict demands on the on the programmer, and it lets you do things like this. But anyway, let's actually make use of this day variable. So um, let's say hello, comma name, comma full stop. It is, and then let's output the day. What happens if I run this? So now I'm, I've got this day parameter, but I'm only supplying one argument just the name each time I run the function. If I run this, it says it is undefined. So it lets me refer to day, but because I haven't given it, I haven't actually given it a value, it just says undefined, but let's give it a value. So here I'm gonna, when I actually call the function, I need to supply ideally, usually, most of the time, I'm gonna be supplying a list of arguments that matches what we've got here. So let's write comma Tuesday. And here let's write comma Saturday. So if I run this, it says, hello, Bob, it is Tuesday. Actually, I it, this looks a bit ugly with uh, because console.log puts a space here. Um, yeah, let's get rid of that full stop. Nah, that'll do. It's, it's quite ugly, actually. Maybe it looked better with a full stop in. It doesn't matter anyway. Hello, Bob. It is Tuesday. Hello, Claire. It is Saturday. So, you know, again, going back to my shoot analogy, it's, here it's as if we've thrown the values Bob and Tuesday down the chute, and they end up getting stuffed into the corresponding parameters here, um, and we can make use of them here. We can also... Of, of course, you, you might guess we can pass variables instead of literal values. So let's say we have a, a variable. Um, we can call it what we want. So we could call it, let's call it something other than day, like day of week equals Tuesday. We can pass um, day of week here instead of a literal hard-coded value. And this works as before. This can also be confusing to beginners um, because uh, this variable doesn't have the same name as this variable, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the mechanism here is not trying to match names of variables. This uh, is simply an argument, it's simply a value that gets passed to the function, thrown down the chute, so to speak, and it it ends up um, being sort of received at the lower end of the chute here. So you, you're just simply taking the comma-separated list of values and shoving them into the corresponding variables here. And of course, you can um, also pass in numbers as well and other kinds of things. You can even pass in arrays. Um, so we'll, we'll leave it there for this video. The thing to do, as always, is try this out for yourself See if you can get creative with it, see if you can change it somehow, try functions with three parameters once you think you've got the hang of it and you know, see how you get on. It is just a question of typing this out to understand it. Uh, I don't think it's good to s spend a lot of time puzzling over it. The thing is to actually try it, get it working for yourself and eventually your fingers will start remembering what to type and this will become second nature to you. So until next time, Happy coding.